The second way to study Europe is going to be its inland locations here. As part of inland location, there are going to be many mountains and peaks. One of them is uh, the Cantabrian Mountains. Uh, Cantabrian Mountains are Precambrian Mountains. That means uh, these mountains were formed during the Precambrian times. Uh, that means uh, these mountains were formed uh, when there was no life on Earth. Uh, so these are Precambrian Mountains of Spain and are known for their iron ore deposits. Uh, mountains are older than the Alps. Uh, they were formed mainly during the Paleozoic and the Mesozoic era, extending from the Bay of Biscay to the Mediterranean Sea. Jura mountain ranges eh, straddle the border between France and Switzerland. Alps are the highest mountain belt in Europe. They are a product of tertiary origin. That means eh, they have been formed during tertiary era and is a source of many great European rivers. Eh. That goes into include the Rhine River, the Po River, the Rhone River, etc. Pennines, eh, which are part of Alps, eh, forms the boundary between Switzerland and Italy. And over Alps, the most important of the peak and the highest peak is going to be Mont Blanc. The Nordic Alps eh, are mountain groups eh, of eh, South eh, Eastern Europe. They are part of the European Alpine system. They are characterized by massive limestone areas which allows rivers to sink into cavities in the rocks and are lost until the waters reappear at lower levels along the Adriatic coast. Eh. The Apennines mountain chain in Italy extends from the Ligurian Alps in the northwest into Sicily and comprises two active volcanoes. One is Mount Vesuvius near Naples and Mount Etla in Sicily. Another of this active volcano happens to be Mount Stromboli. It's a, an active volcano and a composite cone. Since it goes on to lie almost at the mouth of the Mediterranean, it is going to be called by the name of the Lighthouse of the Mediterranean. The Black Forest are block mountains which has largely been damaged by acid rain. Incidentally, Black Forest was one of those regions that saw the first instance of acid rain anywhere in the world. Vosges are another block mountain located at the France-German boundary. One of these most significant is going to be Lake Geneva. Lake Geneva is going to be known for two things. The first is uh, it is one of the best examples of a lake uh, that goes on to experience seashells. Uh, that is, uh, the lake water goes on to oscillate up and down into the hole of the lake. And uh, also in Lake Geneva is uh, going to be the highest fountain in the whole of the world. One of these rivers is going to be the Tagus River. Tagus is in southwestern Europe. The longest of the Iberian Peninsula rivers, which rises in Spain and flows generally west to enter the Atlantic Ocean at Lisbon in Portugal. The Loire River. Loire River is the longest river of France, rising in the Cavernous mountain range, southeastern France, and drains into the Bay of Biscay. The Rhone River rises in the Rhone Glacier in the Swiss Alps and flows generally southwest across southern Switzerland. Rhine is one of these. Rhine is the one river that has almost branded Europe. It originates from Lake Constance and flows through Rift Valley between Vosges and Black Forest. The Danube River is the second largest river in Europe, which rises in the Black Forest region of Germany and flows into the Black Sea, and is one of the principal transportation arteries on the continent. So, which are the cities that will go on to be news and which are not? Eh, that will go on to determine what type of questions that can possibly be framed out of this topic.